Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Hubbard, I'm Penge, and welcome back to Project Hospital, where we're now flying through the events. I think we've completed six in a row now, which is very good indeed. I mean, okay, admittedly, a few of those events were completed by some very, very inspired last minute guesswork, but you know what? It all counts. We got the guesses right, and that was what mattered. So yeah, six in a row is pretty good going, but we're not quite done yet with all the events. We need to complete one more epidemic event to unlock that objective there for how happy life. And if we do that, and then we make them one of our contracted insurance companies, they'll send some more people our way, which is very good because they pay quite a lot for their treatments. And we are going to try to do that today, but not right now because it's a bit late in the day. It's 20 past five in the evening. So I think what we'll do is let's get time ticking on a little bit now and we'll enjoy some epidemic event fun in the morning when the day shifter in and we've got a lot more staff around to do more stuff. I mean, money is looking wonderful right now. Money is looking very good indeed. 100 76,441 minutes. That is splendid stuff. So here we go. Let's get time ticking on nice and quick. We'll try to get to the end of the day shift. Um, oh, okay, right, hang on. We're starting on a slightly more bindo toy. Um, okay, so Peter Miller, his autopsy has finished. He had a leg ballistic wound, and I think now we can release your body to funeral services. Rest in peace, Peter Miller. Farewell, my good sir. Right, there we go. That's not a jolly start, is it? But there we go. You know, it's a hospital. That kind of thing can and probably does happen quite a bit. Oh, no, James Miller. Right, okay. Let's have a look. What can we do for James? James has got a high fever. Okay, hang on. What does he need for that? Antipyretics. Okay, maybe give him some of those. And do you know what? Give him all of these other things as well because they might possibly keep him a little bit alive, which would be quite good. Okay, so they'll sort you out, James. It's fine. Do you know what? We'll code blue you. We'll do that special code blue thing to make sure that they look after you really, really well. I just want to make sure that he does get the stuff of the high fever. He does get those. And where are you? Hopefully. Oh, you're over here. Okay. Surely. Ah, there you go. There you go. Has he got all those things? And that thing is, yeah, sort of uh, not wibbly anymore, which means hopefully he's going to be okay. A spot of typhoid fever. Could we, I was going to say, can we move him, please? I don't want to have an actual epidemic outbreak. There we go. We've moved him over nice and quick. It goes to eight o'clock in the evening. That is wonderful. We paid the day shift. And even though we've just paid the day shift, we've got 136,000 monies almost. That's wonderful. That is very, very good indeed. Right, okay, so let's move time on all the way through the night and we'll see what we can do in the morning. Actually, no, hang on. Hang on, no, 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 slow time down. There is something we can do. Um, over here, hang on, pause time, pause time. So last time we tried to reorganize this room a little bit and I got so far and then there was somebody in that bed and it made it look all very untidy and not very good. But now it looks like there's nobody in that bed. Can we move that bed? And if there still is somebody assigned to that bed, I have got a little bit of a plan, but let's hope that nobody's in that bed. Uh, okay, so we're in emergency. Can we go to here? Oh, we can move the bed. Oh, finally. <laughs> Hooray. Right, okay. So we can't move that cabinet, which is a bit of a shame, but we can move the bed. Okay, what we'll do is, so the bins can go down here because we'd like sort of, uh, we'd like the beds to go along here. If the beds could go along that back wall, to a certain point, that would be quite nice. So that would be wonderful if we could arrange that. Um, so let's put the bins over here, look. Right, hang on, hang on. Move the plant out of the way. The plant is very important, but the bins are also quite useful for, you know, doing medical stuff. So let's get that, put that there. Then we could put the cabinet. In fact, you know what? Move that along like that. We could put the cabinet. Oh, uh, no, hang on. The cabinet might not look very good there. Uh, whatever the case, we have to move the bed. That thing can come down here for now. Um, and then, I mean, yeah, ideally, really, I want the bed there. And then the life saving machine thingamajig has to go just there. And then the bedside table can tuck just there. Okay, so that bed is kind of behind the door now. So yeah, we moved the door last time as well. So people didn't yeah, open the door and bump into the bed because that would be a little bit uncomfortable. But there we go. So we've got that in. That's good. Let's see if we can just spot somebody using this cabinet. It'd be quite nice if we could move that cabinet out of the way. Is anybody coming to grab anything from that cabinet? Yes, you are. Right, okay, pause time for a second. Um, no, no, somebody else is going back in for the cabinet. Hang on a second. <laughs> Let's just keep moving time on until this very popular cabinet is free to move. 
Now you're going in. Right, okay. Hang on. Pause time. Nope, somebody else is still using it. Okay, do you know what? We've got all night. I'll just keep an eye on this cabinet, and when it's not green, we're going to move it to over here somewhere. Okay, so it turns out that this equipment cabinet here is the most popular equipment cabinet in the entire hospital, because there is always somebody going to it and getting stuff from it. At the moment, there is a doctor in this room. That doctor there. So who are you? Dr. Cow. Dr. Intelligent Cow is constantly going to that cabinet and getting stuff from it, and and then going to visit the patients over here in the emergency observation room. However, there is only one equipment cabinet. So if they do need some equipment, that's the only place they can get it from. So I wonder if we were to put another one, say, over here, because we do have a little bit of a gap over there. There's a tiny gap. I and mean, when we could put the plant in it, but maybe putting the equipment cabinet over there might help out a little bit. So if we put a secondary one in, that could be quite useful. And then we might be able to move this one, but I would like to be able to get all of the kind of the doctory stuff over here and then have all of the beds around the outside. That was kind of what I would like. That's the ideal plan. I don't know whether we can do that or not. So maybe putting one over there isn't the best course of action. Maybe what we should do is, okay, hang on, here we go, thinking out loud. Grab the plant and put the plant just there. That's good. Everyone can see the plant. Everybody is happy, yay for the plant. And then that thing can sort of go there. And then let's get another equipment cabinet. Um, let's go for that one. Let's go for a slightly different one. So this one's got drawers in. So put that one there. So maybe they need to go to the new equipment cabinet to get some different stuff from. Oh, now they're using, hang on, hang on. Dr. Cow has left the room. Um, nope, somebody else is using that one. Now. It's always in use. It's in constant, constant use. Okay, right, goes past midnight. We lose some money on the bank loan, kind of interest payments and the Nino machines and all that kind of stuff. But there we go. Right. Is it available to move now? Nope, absolutely not. So now both of them are kind of fixed in place. Maybe we'll never be able to move this. Look, constantly going to and from it. Uh, hang on, hang on. There is a doctor in this room, but are there? <gasps> we can move it. We can move the cabinet. Okay, right. This is huge. This is huge stuff. We can finally move that cabinet out of the way. Um, so where do we want to put the cabinet? I mean, I'd like the cabinets to be over here. So if we can move that out of the way, and move that out of the way. That, oh, hang on. Oh, that's a defibrillator. Hang on. Let me move that to just there. How about we have both equipment cabinets just there, look, next to each other. And okay, they're a little bit further away from these beds than they are from these beds, but yeah, they're still in the same room. It's okay. And then how about move the bins out of the way, and then we can have that thing just there, like that. So they've got, yeah, a couple of things on this side. And then can we put a bin like that, that is a little bit naff actually, isn't it? That can go there and then we've got the red bin, which is just sort of floating about looking a little bit lonely. Okay, maybe the bin shouldn't go there. Maybe the bin shouldn't go there. Where can the bins go? Where can the bins go? Um, I mean, there's a bit of a gap over here, look. We could put the bins across that back wall next to the, the defibrillator, which is also on the wall. That would make sense. Okay. So now we've got that done. That means that that back wall there is nice and clear. This is wonderful. Okay, so let's get some more beds in over here. So I think, hang on, we can put it there, can't we? So we can drop that there, and then we need to get the bedside cabinet in like that. And then we need to get, uh, hang on a minute, where is it? Yeah, there we go. The advanced life monitor which is the more expensive one, but if we're going to do it, we might as well do it properly. Um, so we'll do the, hang on, that one goes on the wall. Um, where does that, how does it fit on the wall? Um, oh, it still fits there. Okay, no, we want the advanced one. We want the advanced one. I thought maybe it could hang over the bed. It might save some space, but no. So if we pop that there, that is another fully working, fully operational bed over here in observation. And then I think what we'll do is, because we have got a bit of money, we'll grab that setup like that, and we'll have another one there, and another one there. Now, one thing this room is lacking is sort of little decency, sort of privacy wall type things. I would like to get them in if we could. So I think, yeah, they need to go alongside the bedside tables like that. So if we do that, look, and that's okay, isn't it? They don't need to be big. They don't need to be too... What are we doing with the other ones? Um, hang on a second. Over here... Uh, okay, that's a terrible example because they haven't got any over there. They haven't got privacy walls, I don't think. 
Have they not got them? Okay, right, don't look at that one. That was a rubbish example. Um, no, it's just one. It's one thing. Okay, so if we just put one little kind of wall in, that should be okay. We'll put one just there like that as you're coming through the door. Um, and then we'll have, uh, yeah, what? It's gonna be next to the bedside tables. So if they need to run round here and go to the important machines that go bing and bong and boop and keep people alive, they can get to them. Okay, so we can do that and then rotate that round and we can draw the side of those on. So that's good. Right, so they're all sorted. And then it's just along here. So one like that, one like that, one like that, and one like that. And then just do a quick rotate round, do the other sides, and there we go. Wonderful stuff. Uh, we have got a bit of a gap over here. Maybe we could put the bins over here and the defibrillator as well. Why not? The defibrillator seems determined to move around. Put that there, put the bin there, and people can still get around here and get to the machine. They can get to the plant and admire it if they want to, and they can get to that bed. Okay, we have got a bit of wasted space over here, but maybe, maybe we could fill that up with something. Well, hang on, hang on. How about then over here, maybe we just pop in a few stretchers because they're always handy. Can always do with you know, a few more stretchers here and there. Um, oh, is it wheelchairs for this room? Is it wheelchairs? Why can't we have stretchers? I thought stretchers would have been a thing as well. Hang on, have I missed the stretchers? Possibly I've overlooked where they are. Um, hang on a minute, let's go and find some stretchers. They're not, they're not here, are they? I would have thought they would have been with the wheelchairs. I mean, maybe we just put some wheelchairs in. Just put some white wheelchairs in. I mean, it's not, you know, just a couple of them at the end of the bed there. Just, um, hang on, can we get a third one in? Can we get a third one in like that? Yeah, there we go. We'll put three wheelchairs in. That might help. Again, yeah, a little bit of wasted space. Unless, oh, but now we're going to have to wait for people to not use all this stuff over here. Unless we could have a little kind of sort of equipment station in the middle here, and then we could get another bed possibly another bed across here and another bed across there and put all the equipment in the middle. That might work. That would look, look a bit weird, but it would work. Um, yeah, so if we have those things back to back, oh yeah, this is gonna be good. I think we can we can do this. We can make this work. Um, that can just sort of go in the middle because that's a mobile station. So that can go anywhere. Uh, if we put that back in onto that one, because that makes sense. Um, the hand washing station thing, could do with going on the back of that and then get the equipment cabinet put that one there so now we need to wait oh what that one that we just put in is now in use <laughs> botherations okay this is fine right they've gone to the equipment cabinet are they still using it of course they are right we can move these over at some point i'm fairly determined that we can move these things over right that can move okay so put that there now it's just the hand washing station okay so if we could just Go to the hand washing station. Nobody's using it now. Uh, oh, apparently they are. Apparently that's in use. You could have, oh, there you go. Right, pause time. He's literally just walked away from it. Yes, perfect. Okay, so if we put that there, look, a little kind of area in the middle where they can get the equipment and all that kind of stuff, the bins can remain in the same place, I would say. Yeah, that thing is a little bit of an odd one because it just, it can float around and go anywhere. We'll put it at the end there, maybe. Let's put it at the end there. Can we also make it blue? There we go, that looks much better. And then I think, yeah, we can fit at least one more bed in. We can get one more bed over there. So let's do that, shall we? If we can fit one more bed in, that's got to be a positive thing. So yeah, we'll have that, please. We'll pop that there. And then do we need to get another uh, wall bit? No, it's got a little wall bit there. Okay, and you know what? There's space there. We could put that thing like that. Okay, that looks a bit better. That makes a better use of the space. Still got a bit of room down there. We could put, do you know what we could put down there? Do you know what we could put there? We've got, uh, what space have we got? One, two, three. We've got three spaces. I think that's room enough for three lovely plants. If I could find the right button. There we go. Three plants, please. Uh, we shall have that plant in a blue pot and that plant in a blue pot and uh, that plant in a blue pot wonderful very planty very nice okay that is much better so it's reorganized it's a little bit more useful in terms of space and of course there are many more beds right that is good William Wright is less good because they're having a little bit of a collapse they've got some hidden symptoms uh, they're being controlled by the doctors 
That's okay. They'll get it sorted, William Wright. Don't you worry. Okay, so let's get through to the morning. Seven o'clock, we pay out the night shift wage. Um, oh, okay. William Wright can't be diagnosed. Oh, okay. Um, try selecting a different one from a list of possible diagnoses or making more tests available. Okay, well, let's give them vitamin supplements and beta blockers for these things I've got going on here. So it's either... Oh, I don't know what those things mean. Let's put them into general surgery because that might give them some more stuff available. So have that and go into there and then. Do you know what? We will take control of you, William Wright. We're going to do this in a bit anyway when we trigger our pandemic. Not pandemic. <laughs> Let's not trigger a pandemic event. That would be bad. That would cause us some trouble. Um, how about an epidemic event instead? Um, okay, she's collapsing. She's got bird flu. Okay, can we... Oh, no. She's collapsed. Please, please don't infect everybody else. Okay, give you all of these things, please. Um, but ideally, we want to move you to the thingy as soon as we can. We want to move you to infectious diseases. Um, yeah, right, don't don't breathe it. Ah, right, I think she's going. I think she's going to... Oh, no. Ah, yeah, look, they've got a... Um, they've got it. She's collapsing again. Oh, dear. Temperature measuring. She's got many examinations underway. She's got kind of like a sort of a, a mask on type thing. So I imagine, yeah, she's breathing in and out of some sort of like secure breathing equipment or whatever. So she's not going to necessarily spread the bird flu around. That's good. That's good news. Okay, right. Wonderful. That's that sort. Of and I think, did I just see her possibly go up to infectious diseases? Maybe I did. Oh, hang on a minute. Where is she now? Um, hang on. Is that somebody else? That might have been so... Okay, I don't know who... Where's... Oh, now William's... Oh, no, William Wright's collapsing. However, we know what's wrong with William, right? He's got esophageal varices. Yeah, of course he has. They are abnormally enlarged veins within the esophagus. They are usually caused by portal hypertension due to existing liver disease, and you need band ligation. Okay, um, we'll do the endoscopic cauterization because you're bleeding in your stomach, which is quite bad. And then you can have this band ligation thing on. Okay, right. So do that, please. And we shall blue light you to make sure that you survive. But yeah, if we could do that that thing really soon, this cauterization thing to stop his stomach bleeding, that would be good because that would possibly make him less dead. But he died. <laughs> you timed that well, William Wright. Okay, okay. He wasn't here for very long, was he? He was quite seriously injured. He didn't just have that. If he's got bleeding in his stomach and he's going to septic shock, there's more at work than just that. Okay. Right. Do an autopsy, please. Oh, dear. Right. We're not going to control that anymore. Away, away you go. Back to computer control. Botherations. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Can't be helped. He was quite badly injured. You know, again, as we said earlier, it's a hospital. That thing happens in hospitals. It's a very sad thing, but it is a fact of a hospital. That's going to happen from time to time. Right, let's get to seven o'clock. So we pay out the night shift wages. We've still got 90 grand, even though we've paid out the wages on the night shift. So now we get through to eight o'clock and then we get all the money coming in from the overnight stays, which should top our bank balance back up quite a lot. So here we go, 90, 100, 140, 146, <laughs> 152. That's ridiculous. Judy Baker is collapsing. Oh, Judy Baker. Uh, right. Judy Baker could possibly have COVID-19. That would be bad. Um, okay. And she's got hidden symptoms. Uh, I'm sure they'll sort that out. I'm sure they'll they'll get all that sorted. It's all fine. It's all fine. We don't need to get too involved with everything. Um, okay, William Wright. Uh, hang on. They're doing the autopsy. So RJ, Dr. RJ, is doing the autopsy. Uh, and then, yes, at some point when that's done, we're going to send your body to the funeral services. It's all very sad. Right, 9.21, though. I think it's time to trigger our third epidemic event. I mean, it's more, I think we've done more than three. Was it three in a row we had to complete for this? Uh, successfully finished, yeah. So I think, yeah, we've successfully, uh, successfully finished two, but I'm fairly certain that we failed one when we didn't take control of all the people. So here we go. Let's give this a go, shall we? Um, and also, if we do that, it also pushes us closer to completing that objective there for quick snap care. And they'll give us 50 grand if we complete that. That would be amazing. So um, here we go. 
let's possibly give ourselves a huge headache with some more virusy people. Right, there we go. This flu season has been worse than usual, with a large and expected number of people contracting the virus. Doctors are advising people to attend their local hospital if they believe they have the virus. Expect a significant increase in patients. Okay, so how many are we going to get? Take overall patients. Let's click this button. It's not going to be three, is it? Let's be honest, it's not going to be three. Uh, oh, okay. What's that? Ten? Five, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Oh, okay. That is, that's not as bad as I was expecting it to be. Um, okay, right. Let's go through all of these people and give them a bit of a code blue. Okay, there we go. Everybody is now code blued. So let's get time moving on and let's see who gets here first. There's quite a lot of people here. Okay, right. They're all here. They're all here and they're either in waiting rooms or with the receptionist or whatever. Right, Kate Adams is the first up. She's got copter. What's copter? I don't even know what that is. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Copter is a chronic inflammatory lung disease that results in obstructive, air, obstructive airways in the lungs. That sounds really bad. And she's got a hidden symptom. That is wibbly. Oh no, hang on. And she's got dyspnea. Right, she needs oxygen therapy stuff right now, but I think, because we know she's got that, that's internal medicine. Okay, so go to internal medicine. Do that, please. Give you some rest. Okay, what's going to help with this? Right now, a few people did say again that we didn't press the right buttons last time. So how does this work exactly? So these are potential treatments for oxygenotherapy. Is that it? Um, no. These aren't potential treatments. These are potential symptoms that they could have as part of copter. We only know these three that they could have, say, breathing problems. They could have chest pain. They could have elevated CRP. So we need to figure out what is going to be the best examination to possibly reveal some of these symptoms here. Um, okay. So let's do the basic things first. An interview, talk with them about what's happening, do a physical exam, and then possibly do a chest thing because it looks like it's you know, a lung related thing. So do that please. And we'll see what we can do with that. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll go from there. So that might help out possibly. Okay, who's up next? Sarah Allen, copter. It might be COPD. I'm gonna call it copter or aspergillosis. Okay, again, you've got the same sort of thing chest pain, dyspnea, so shortness of breath. Right, have all your three treatmenty things. Um, so that's internal medicine. Right, you're going to internal medicine, whichever one of these it is. That's quite good. I'm not quite sure yet. So interview, physical, hang on, chest thing, physical exam. And again, we'll go from there. Right, so that's two people. Um, okay, the auto autopsy is finished for William Wright. Rest in peace, William Wright. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I think maybe it was a little bit of a lost cause when you arrived. Um, okay, Frank Hill. Frank Hill is not one of our event people. So, okay, Frank, they'll sort you out. It's okay. They'll they'll get on with it, Frank. Right, Charles Adams is one of our people. He's got aspergillosis. What's that again? A respiratory disease caused by the fungus aspergillus. If the patient has a weakened immune system, the invasive form of the disease spreads through the lungs. Infected lungs must undergo pulmonary surgery to clear the infection. It sounds very unpleasant. Have all of those treatments because you've got many things. You haven't got any hidden symptoms at a wibbly. You have got a wibbly symptom there. And you're going over to internal medicine. Maybe just do some basic stuff there, please. There we go. Right. So that should be okay for you. So that's what our third person that we've looked at. Right, Richard Scott. We're not quite sure what's wrong with you. I thought everyone was supposed to have flu. The thing that popped up said everybody's got flu. Nobody's had flu yet. <laughs> everyone's had other things. Um, right, so have the two things. That's okay. We don't know quite what's wrong with you yet. So physical exam. Um, can. Oh, yes, Dr. Dave. Dr. Dave can do an evaluation. That'll be quite good. And then can you do... Um, now where is it? Everybody's favourite. Where's everybody's favourite? I can't see. Where's differential diagnosis? Maybe we can't do it. Um, or have I just gone past it really obviously? There it is. It's just there. Right, so do that, please. Let's see if that helps. Right, Jennifer Baker, viral tonsillitis. Again, not the flu, but okay. Um, you need all of these things. You have got some hidden symptoms, but they're not blinking. And we know what the problem is. So have all of these things. There you go. 
and rest. Okay, you're going to be okay. I think we can treat that with some sort of, you know, uh, painkillers or whatever. Right, Karen Scott. Uh, okay, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune disease where the immune system gradually destroys the thyroid gland. Good grief. Um, okay, All right, have those three things there for now. Um, okay, what can we do with this then? A neck palpitation. That might help determine if it's laryngitis or pharyngitis. Do a physical exam, do a neck palpitation. Dr. Hurd, you go for that, please. Okay, so we are getting through these. Right, Sarah Garcia, you've got copter. You can go into there. You've got the hidden symptoms. Did we see you before? No, because you haven't had any of these treatments whatsoever. Um, right, so go over to, uh, yeah, go to internal medicine. You can have a physical exam. You can have a chest thingamabob and differential diagnosis. That will help quite a bit. Okay, so you go over to there, please, if you could go really quickly. Um, Okay, Jennifer Baker. Jennifer Baker can go home. She can go home already. It was tonsillitis. She can treat that at home. It's wonderful. Okay, we're down to nine people. Um, Mary, here we go. Mary Jackson has either got a cold or respiratory sync... Hang on, what? Synctial... Syn syncytial virus. Okay, HRSV, also known as human... Orthopneumonovirus is a synchytial virus causing respiratory infections. Can you tell I'm not a doctor? Right. Have all of these things to deal with your symptoms. Um, a cold or a chest thing. Okay, how about then? Uh, chest, chest thing. Physical exam. Differential diagnosis. There you go. Dr. Hollander can sort that out. That'll be wonderful. Haven't seen you for a while, Dr. Hollander. Sarah Allen is... Oh, no. Sarah Allen's one of our people. Right, we have to keep her alive. We have to keep her alive at all costs. Have we given her her things yet? I don't think we're right. She needs artificial ventilation, I think. Um, okay, Do, this is urgent. We don't want anything bad to happen to her, because if she dies, then, um, yeah, we lose our streak there, and it's generally bad. We get hit with a fine as well. Um, you've either got histoplasmosis or valley fever. Okay, an infection caused by... Notice I didn't read that first bit. Valley fever, also called, here we go, folks, buckle up, buckle up, um, cochidiodomycosis. Really, I can see why they call it valley fever, because that just sounds like you're clearing your throat. The other one is an infection caused by fungus, that word, that lives in the soil of the southwestern US, Mexico, and Central and South America. Okay, or a respiratory disease caused by a fungus. Nothing's going to cause you to collapse, I don't think. So have some antipyretics and get some chest stuff done, possibly. Um, yeah, that's... They're going to be infections, so maybe that's blood. Yeah, you might need some blood work underway. Okay, that's fine. Hopefully that will help out a bit. Um, Jennifer Walker. I don't think we've seen you yet. Have all of those things to possibly treat your symptoms. And we're not quite sure what's wrong with you. Nothing's flashing on and off. So have... All of these things here. Have those two things. And can we do the favourite differential diagnosis? Dr. Lama's on the case with that one. Okay, here we go. Right, Karen Scott back. Oh, you've got laryngitis. We figured it out. So, um, yeah, analgesics, antibiotics. I think you'll be okay. I think you will be treated soon enough. You'll be able to go home. Sarah Garcia. Oh, no. She's, she's one of these. Okay, right. Um, surgeries and certain more complicated procedures require prior hospitalisation. Okay, we shall put you into high dependency because you still have a wibbly thing. Um, what's going to help with this though? CRP, uh, inflammatory and infectious diseases. That's an inflammatory lung disease. So maybe that will help. Maybe that will help a little bit. Um, okay, so you're in hospital. Please don't die. Please don't die. Right, Kate Adams. Um, you still got... Ah, hang on. You've not got anything flashing on and off anymore. That's quite good. And you've got Copda, uh, which is oxygen therapy stuff, which you're being given. Okay. So hopefully that's going to be you. Okay. Karen Scott, you can go home. That's very good. We've cured three people. 30% of the way through, folks. This is good. Mary Jackson. You've got a common cold. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll give you some saline nasal spray 
and I think you're going to be okay, Mary Jackson. I think you're going to muddle through with a bit of sniffles. Jennifer Walker, histoplasmosis, nothing flashing on and off. That is internal medicine to possibly treat that. And it's anti-colimiotics, whatever it is. That one there. Okay, so that should be you then treated. Okay, we'll work 60% through. Okay, Mary Jackson, common cold. Yeah, you can go home. So now we're down to, what, seven people under our direct care? That's really good. That's very good. Kate Adams. Um, you've got the copter thing. Um, I mean, you've got three hidden symptoms. Is it worth just trying to figure out exactly what's going on with you? Maybe uncover those three so you can get treated. Frank Hill. Frank Hill, again, is not one of our event people. He's got tuberculosis. Um, okay. I think... Can we? I was in infectious disease already. Right, differential diagnosis. Do an x-ray of the chest. Give him all of these things, please. Why does he not have all of these things? Give him all the stuff to keep him alive. <laughs> Give him all of the things he needs, please. Right, four more people need to be cured. Paul Brown. Paul Brown isn't one of these... Oh, hang on. He's from referral. A case for a specialised department. A case collapsed. He's either got Ebola or Marburg. I suspect maybe we have to isolate him away because Ebola is quite contagious. So isolate you away, please. Please clear off. Um, okay, so what's going to help with this? Oh, crikey. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on. You need all the things to make sure that you're okay. So get all the things to treat your current symptoms. Um, okay. <laughs> what's going to help here? Physical exam. That's a physical exam. CBC testing. That might help. Um, and Elisa. So do that and do differential diagnosis. Just do all of them. Do all of the things. Keep Paul Brown alive, please. We don't want people dying in the hospital. It makes folks sad. Right, Sarah Allen has copda. Okay, you can go up into, uh, yeah, internal medicine. That's very good. And you've got no symptoms at a wibbly. So I think, could we give you, uh, yeah, do a CRP thing and then do differential diagnosis. And we'll see if that just uncovers those final symptoms to make you a little bit more comfortable. Right, Charles Adams, you've got that thing. You've got four hidden symptoms. Okay, differential diagnosis and a thorax percussion, because that sounds like a thing we could possibly do. 80% cured. This is wonderful, right? Jennifer Walker, she's got that. Oh, she can go home. She can go home. Cheerio, Jennifer Walker. Down to six people. Charles Adams. You've still got your three hidden symptoms. I don't know, do a temperature measurement and an x-ray. I don't know, just whatever. Send you around the hospital. Have a little tour around. It's going to be fine. It's Richard Scott and Jessica Brown that we need to worry about here. Um, okay, Richard Scott has histoplasmosis. Have some cough suppressants. Have some antimycotics. And what do we do with that? Oh, yeah, right. So internal medicine and then... Two hidden symptoms. I don't know. Do a neck palpitation. But does that help with that? That's a respiratory thing. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You've got two hidden symptoms. They're not wibbly. You're not at any kind of huge risk. I don't believe, he says. <laughs> Possibly speaking too soon. Right. So you're being called Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is not a part of our event thing. Um, oh. Oh dear. Right. You've possibly got some terror. You've possibly got Ebola. Um, okay, we can't move him. That's a bit of a shame. Right, give him all the stuff. Give him all the things. Oh, no. We need to move you really quickly somewhere else because you might possibly have Ebola, <laughs> which is quite contagious. And we don't want an outbreak of Ebola because that would be bad. Richard Scott, you can go home. That's wonderful. Can these others go home? Uh, no, they're waiting for the, the cop duster. Jessica Brown. Going to doctor. No diagnosis. No, no anything. Hang on, what? She's part of the event. Did she collapse fairly early on? Did she collapse? Possibly she did. Okay, Sarah Allen has been treated. Sarah Allen is... Oh, yeah, you've got a tick on yours. You're okay. Um, Hang on. <laughs> this is very confusing. But there we go. So you've had your interview. It took that long to see you. Good grief. Right, physical exam. That would make sense, wouldn't it? You've got some sweating. So have some uh, have some anti-sweaty drugs. Um, and then, I mean, yeah, it looks like it looks like a lungy 
So I like, oh no, it could be anything. It could be a venomous spider bite. Um, okay, do where are we? Do where, where is it? Where hang on? Where's where's everyone's favourite thing? Evaluation is good, and then do differential diagnosis because that does seem to be quite good. You've got abnormal lung findings. Okay, have NSAIDs for that, please. Well, you are treated. Elizabeth Jackson is collapsing. Mild frostbite. Um, yeah, defibrillate that person, please. And they've got hypoxia. They've got all the stuff on the way. I think they'll muddle through. They'll be okay. It's all going to be fine. Right, Jessica Brown. It's all on you. It's all on you. We have to sort out what you've got. It's either pneumonia. Oh, right. She's got pneumonia. Okay, that's bad. But we can treat that. So pneumonia into internal medicine. Get all those things, please. It's going to be fine. Um, I think, yeah, do we need to give you, do we need to put you in hospital for that? Not in, oh, hang on, she's got hidden symptoms at a wibbly. Wibbly hidden symptoms. Um, okay, listen to the chest, do a CRP thing. Uh, we'll get you treated. I imagine we can get a tick in this and complete the event. We've got, what's that? Eight minutes, 10 seconds less. We're gonna be okay to complete the event. But I suspect, yeah, we want to keep you alive as well. Um, Sarah Garcia. Two hidden symptoms. We don't know what they are. Diet modification for your weight loss. You're going to be okay. You're going to be fine, right? Jessica Brown requires hospitalization. Okay, right. You've got tremors. Um, we've given you beta blockers for those. Yeah, still got hidden symptoms. Right. You're going to need high dependency hospitalization. And okay, so what can we do for this then? So these are potential symptoms. So thorax percussion, we could go for that. Speech listening, chest thing. So thorax percussion, speech listening, temperature measurement. They've got to be nice, simple things to do to maybe uncover the hidden symptom that is making that go wibbly. The dangerous wibbly symptom. Nurses are complaining that there's not enough stretchers for all patients that need transport at infectious diseases. It's a little bit of an anomaly right now, isn't it? in infectious diseases because we have got an epidemic event going on. Right, you've completed your diet modification. You're gonna be fine. You're just gonna heal up and go home at some point. You're okay. I'm a bit concerned about Jessica Brown. It's taking a very long time. There we go, complete. Seven in a row, we get given 20 grand and that also means now, um, I think, yeah, we'll relinquish control of everybody back to the computer. So there you go, you all deal with them. Hang on, give you NSAIDs first. Um, yeah, you go to there, you go to there. So now we're not controlling any patients at all, which is very nice. The event is complete. We've been given the money. And also down here, look, Happy Life's objective is now complete. So I think, yeah, they're gonna send 15 people our way. No flashy lights, Nino machines, but we don't know what's next. There might be another objective behind that, which is really good. So I think we drop cheapo care because they do send 28 people our way and three flashy lights, Nino machines. But those people are only paying 100%. They're just covering, the insurance companies are covering the cost of the treatment. Whereas down here, they pay 130% of the treatment because they're fancy pants. So I think drop cheapo care, get happy life on board. We're going to complete that as soon as we move time on. Okay, it's done. Right, reach 85% prestige at the end of the day at infectious diseases. Okay, I think we're pretty... Yeah, look at that, it's on five stars. So if we do that, we get given a $20,000 government grant. Okay, that's very exciting as well. Right, move time on. Let's get that done right now. Let's just get that sorted. Can't help but notice there's a massive splodge of blood on the floor there. <laughs> Could we not get a janitor to come and clean this up? It's a little bit unsanitary. Don't we have janitors around here? Um, monitor patient is collapsing. Oh, you're in a really bad way. Oh, crikey, you're you're very un unwell. Um, okay, <laughs> maybe don't do an interview with them. Yeah, patient can't talk. I'm not surprised. They're in quite a bad way. Physical exam, abdominal palpitation. Just do the stuff to keep them alive. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, that could go wrong. Frank King is also having a little bit of a wobble. Just give you all the stuff you need to make sure you're not so wobbly. Um, yeah, if we could get through to the end of the day, uh, Richard Moore. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's him. He's still in a bad way. Um, ah, it, this might be bad, mightn't it? Do we want to take control of Richard Moore? 
just to make sure that he's okay. He's got two hidden symptoms. This is going to be really bad. Um, okay, physical exam we're trying to do. ECG. I mean, hypovolemic shock is blood pressure. Maybe we do do that heart monitoring, do a fast thing. Um, okay, we're going to try and keep you alive, Richard Moore. We're going to try and uncover these symptoms and make sure you don't end up being a bit dead. But um, yeah, I think, look at the amount of money we've got. <laughs> it's ludicrous. I'd like to get that done. So get to 85% prestige. Yeah, someone else is having a momentary collapse. It'll all be fine. Right, these things have been sorted. Ah, severe hemorrhage. Oh, um, ah, botherations. <laughs> right. That is going to ruin this, isn't it? We're not going to get to 85% prestige at the end of the day in infectious diseases because, yeah, we've got another epidemic outbreak. Michael Thomas. Okay. Ebola or Marburg. Ah, bother. Okay, differential diagnosis. Just get that looked at, please. So now, what is our thing? Over in infectious diseases, it's still four and a half stars. We might be okay. We might muddle through, possibly. Uh, more concerned about you. So hemorrhage, pressure bandage, and then we need to figure out exactly what's wrong with you. Um, okay, differential diagnosis, possibly a, that thing. Ultrasonography, maybe get that done. And we'll see if that possibly... If we get that hemorrhage done, that's going to stop you possibly dying, which would be nice. Right, we're down to 188 grand. Uh, Frank Scott's collapsing, oh dear me. Lots of collapsing happening all of a sudden. Um, I'm sure they can muddle through. How's observation looking? Got some spare beds, that's quite nice to see. So, uh, okay, right, get through to the end of the day. So Rodriguez is collapsing. <laughs> it's going to be busy in intensive care, isn't it? Good grief. Right, can we please get to 85% uh, prestige at the end of the day. That would be wonderful. Right, Richard Moore's got a liver laceration. Okay, can we please get that done? Abdominal surgery is required in general. Surgery, but we can't do anything because I assume he's in transit or he's collapsed or something. Uh, Hospitalised, undergo it. Ah, right, there we go. Right, so go there and then have abdominal surgery, please. Yes, absolutely. Get treated, please. Right. Poodle time on until the end of the day. Come on, please complete that goal. We've waited so long to move these goals on. It'd be great if we could get that done. And boop, there we go. 20,000 money comes our way. Um, Jane White is collapsing. And now what's the next one? Oh, good grief. Successfully finished two epidemic events in a row. Naught out of two. So we've got to do another two epidemic events. Oh, good grief. <laughs> We've just done one, and it, it it's really intensive. They take a long time to do. Um, okay, okay. Prestige bonus 20% for one day. It's not even that good a reward. It's not even that good a reward for the amount of stress that you have to deal with to go through with all that. Okay, never mind. Um, we could possibly try and do an accident event. If we do an accident event, that gives us quick snap cares gold done. That's another 50 grand. And um, yeah, protect care... Their objective will tick up to two out of three just there. So that could be quite good as well. Um, however, we do have this epidemic going on right now. So what we're going to do is, I think you're going to be okay now. I think you're going to be okay, Richard. So put you back to computer control. I think what we do is we fly through until the end of day 85. And then that means the epidemic outbreak will go away. And then at the start of day 86, we give ourselves an accident event to deal with. I think that's what we do. So unless something completely extraordinary happens, a little bit like this possibly, why can't they do anti-malarial medication? Why can't they do that? Uh, hang on, why not? Hospitalization required for the treatment is not available. Check free beds. Um, oh, no free bed in a working ward. Oh, oh dear. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on. Where are we with this? Um, pause time for a second. Oh no, I've gone up another floor. That's the roof. <laughs> We're not going to put it on the roof. That would be bad. Is it completely full? Oh, look at that. Infectious diseases is completely full in terms of the ward. Maybe we should have another ward over here. That's very busy. Um, we've got a big pile of money. We could do that. We could put another ward just there. So people come out the elevator... I mean, were they going to want to walk along here? 
Do we want a wall just there? A little bit like we've got just then. Or what a corridor just there. Um, so the ward could come along like that. It wouldn't be able to have two beds. So one bed on either side. I don't think it's quite big enough. Let's take up two. One, two. No, it would be big enough. It would be okay. So maybe we do that. I think possibly to make sure that we can treat Thomas Foster here. I think we get that in. We need some more bed space. Um, okay, yeah, let's get that done. Let's do that now. That'll pass some time, won't it? That'll be a fun thing to do. Right. Okay, yeah, look at that. Completely full. It's really popular over here in infectious disease. Everyone wants to come in and have an infectious disease and enjoy this lovely department over here. Uh, right, let's get some walls in. So let's go to there, drip a drop that wall. Thank you very much. And then get the corners in. Um, yeah, so we'll put it like that. And then we'll go one, two, three. So that can be a corridor going around there, just in case people need easy access to whatever's going to be over here. So there we go. So a little sort of a mini ward, if you like, but that's fine. Right, then get the flooring in. So go to there, grab the floors, put that across like that. Right, the doors are the big, lovely biohazard doors. Of course, we want those. So huge, big, double biohazard door. Um, they're right at the end, aren't they? But let's do what we did before. So to pop that there and pop that there. So two big biohazard doors. Um, and then we can just, yeah, we need to zone that out, don't we? So hang on a minute. Zone it out as a regular ward. Pop that in like that. Then click that. And then I think... We can probably just copy some of these. We can probably just grab, say, a thing like that. So go like that. And that is a bed and a bedside table all ready to go. And they don't need anything else. That, that's all they need in here. Uh, so we're just going to pop that there. There's no point putting, you know, like visitor chairs in because that's bad. Oh, hang on. Why is that sad? That's complaining about something. Oh, do they need space on the left? Oh, you have to be able to stand on the left. Okay, that's fine. So we'll pop that there. Okay, you have to be able to get around that side then. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we want to get... Um, hang on a minute. Hang on, click in there. We want to get some bins in here because we like the bins. So we'll put a bin there. Don't quite know what happened to the, uh, to the screen there. And a bin just there. And then, of course, we can get some plants in. Let's have those ones in, I don't know, that coloured pot. So there we go, a couple of nice plants, that's very lovely. We'll get the um, sort of the decency wall in like that, because we might as well whilst we're here. And then we can just, yeah, just, just drag and drop that. Looks so we'll have one, two, three, four, five. Can't fit another one in at the end there, which is a bit of a shame. And you know what, while we've got the money, we might as well just do all of this. We'll just get it all done. So pop one there. And one there. And one there. I think that does... Why is it doing that? It's flying around. <laughs> That's very odd. Um, and yeah, that just fits. We will put another bit of wall in just there. Because I feel like, yeah, if you are going to be in that bed and they're going to keep banging into the... Um, banging, Yeah, the door's going to keep banging into your bed. So at least there's a wall there now. Okay, and I think that room needs defibrillators to make it a proper valid room. So have one just there and one just there. And then in that gap over there, is it worth having something like an equipment cabinet or a sink or something like that? Maybe a sink might be quite useful. So if they need to wash their hands because of, you know, the infectious diseases, they could go there and do that. Let's do that. Let's have a stainless steel cabinet and then we'll just pop over. Where's a bathroom? It, it's right opposite there. Wonderful. Um, Grab the sink. So pop a sink into the top of that and then get a mirror as well. Wonderful. So they can go and wash their hands if they need to. I quite like that. That's going to be quite good. Right. There we go. Sorted. So now hopefully that person. No, it's not you. I don't think that CT wasn't you. Uh, you. So yeah, anti-malarial medication can't be treated. But now you can because we're going to put you into regular hospitalization. There we go. You can get treated now. We spent quite a chunk of money on this. But there you go. You're the first in here. Well done. <laughs> Welcome aboard. And um, I think as well, what we'll do, again, while we do have a pile of money, I think we pay off another 20 grand of our bank loan. It's not very exciting. It's a very boring, sensible thing to do. But when that gets down to zero, that's going to be a huge achievement. That's going to be amazing. 
because yeah, we had to take that out in dire straits at one point. We're in a bad way and we really need the money. And now we're sort of, you know, we're muddling through. We're earning enough to pay it back, which is good. Um, they're getting bored. I can't do anything about that, Karen. I'm sorry, but yeah, there we go. Just knock that down to 140 grand. Okay, Patricia Jones. Um, Nex and Vinny has become a little bit complicated. The doctor's diagnostic skill level can't work out what's wrong with them. Okay, do you know what? We'll step in. Don't you worry, Nex and Vinny. Um, okay, they've got, <laughs> they've got one of many things. Have those two things. Um, you've done a few bits and bobs. How about we do an evaluation? Because that might help. And you can't do differential diagnosis. Hang on. Um, what about you? Can you do it? No. Oh. Okay. Hang on a minute. Have we got nobody on the night shift that can do differential diagnosis on in whatever that is in internal medicine? That's not very good, is it? Okay, never mind. Right. We'll 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 let you sort of we'll let them have a go at that, I think. We'll see if they can figure out anything from those two things. And that doesn't help. We'll keep doing some more stuff. Uh, Frank, yep, okay. You had an evaluation. Not really sure what's going on there. It could be anything. <laughs> we press that button. It could be, oh, crikey's okay. Um, who knows? It can't be an interview, physical exam we've done. Uh, thorax percussion. Let's do some thorax percussion and some neck palpitation and some speech listening and a CRP thing. Do all nice, straightforward, simple things that don't require that much bother. Ah, here we go. Look, we've whittled it down to two things already. That was pretty good. You can have those two things. Emphysema or a pulmonary embolism. Isn't that really bad? If we don't treat that, doesn't that mean that they could possibly end up being a bit dead? Like really quickly. Um, okay, no, that's 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 really not good, is it? Um, how about we do a blood pressure measurement and then an ECG? That's the heart's electrical activity. That would seem a sensible thing to do. Right. And, oh no, Frank died from chronic kidney disease. Oh, okay. Um, hang on. Autopsy on you. Progressive kidney damage. Oh dear, you were in a very bad way, Frank. You were in a bad, bad way. Oh, I'm so sorry, Frank. We don't like it when we lose people. But you know, again, sometimes it happens. It's happened quite a lot this time round. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Frank Scott hasn't got a bed to go into for high dependency. Bother. Okay, have all of those things. Um, okay, that is... Uh, hang on a minute. I'm with the wrong way around. Here. That's here. Uh, which is high dependency? Which is high... De is that high dependency? That, I think that might be high dependency over here. Could we possibly fit another bed in over there? Could we just squeeze another bed in? I think we possibly could. I think we... I oh know they need four spaces, do they? Hang on, hang on. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Um, click on that and then go to here and grab that. Is that going to fit in? Uh, no, it's going to be in the way of the door. We might need to move the door possibly because I think it's more important. I don't, I don't know what's going on with the camera today. It's only a right weird moment. Um, unless we just put some beds across the end. Unless we just put some beds, say here put one there and one next to it that's at least using that space a bit more isn't it so we could put a bed there and then a bed there okay that makes a bit more sense and the plant is tucked away in the corner that's quite nice the defibrillator does look a little bit lost let's move that over to just there there we go and we figured out what's wrong with patricia she's got emphysema okay so that means that you need to go to internal medicine where you are and you need to have oxygenotherapy. There you go. You can have a bit of that, please. And that will hopefully sort you out. So I think now, yeah, we can safely return you back to computer control. There we go. Oh, hang on. You need to be hospitalized. OK, go into the regular ward. That's fine. OK, don't worry about that. OK, there we go. So we're not looking after any more people and things seem to be ticking over. Oh, OK, Frank's autopsy is done. OK, right, Frank, release you to funeral services. Rest in peace, Frank. Farewell. Right, there we go. So, yeah, we got the money from the overnight stays. We're almost at $200,000. We're getting very close to it, which is very silly indeed. But, yeah, prestige today is at 55%. Yesterday, 83%. So patient intake is down and the insurance payments are back to a regular 100%, which is OK. But, of course, we like it when it's higher. So I think... What we'll do is, 
I mean, I'm really tempted to pay back a chunk of this, but I think because we might possibly struggle tomorrow and today with money coming in, I think we'll leave it for now. I think we'll leave it for now. Having 201,000 monies is very nice though. Yeah, I think we'll leave it until we get to the morning. Let's get to the morning and then possibly we'll pay off a little bit of money then, depending on how good it looks, depending on how much money we've got. But yeah, it'd be quite nice to pay some off because it's always nice to not be in debt to the bank, isn't it? But uh, but yeah, there we go. We'll see what money we've got in the morning and then we'll maybe pay off a bit of loan. But yeah, it might be risky to do it now. So here we go. Let's get time running on until the end of day 85, get rid of the epidemic outbreak, then get to the morning of day 86 and then we'll see what money we have. That person just gave us $4,050. Thank you, whoever you were. <laughs> Mysterious benefactor. That's very nice. Uh, nice, you're having a bit of a bad time though. Um, you've got a bad arm wound but it looks like you're in the right place they'll sort you out case of Foster. it's okay um so yeah let's run time on until the morning of day 86 okay well there's something i've never ever seen before linda barclay's bed has broken i've never ever seen that okay hang on whereabouts are you and what happened to your bed why is it broken um which is it that is that you no is that you Linda Barclay in a bed with missing equipment. Um, what? Which bit's broken? I don't know which bit's broken. There's a... Hang on, there's a wheelchair in the way. Is the wheelchair blocking access to the... The sort of, you know, the life-saving machine that goes bing and bong and boop? I don't know. Um, okay, hang on a second. Hang on. Go to there. Go to... Um, go to there. Make sure you're in the right department. Um, yeah, that's flashing orange how do we repair this <laughs> i've got no idea how do we repair the bed uh i mean yeah it just says repair the bed or should we transfer to another bed or send away i mean she could go to another bed that would be fine i'd be okay with that maybe we should get her moved to another bed because yeah there's one over there looks so they can move her and there's, a, there's one over there as well so there's space for her to be moved to um Patient's room was broken or unavailable. So we're transferring patient to the new observation room room. Okay. This is very strange. I don't know what's going on here. Right, they've moved her to there. Is the bed still broken? <laughs> uh, yes, it is. It's in orange. Right. Okay, so we have to... Do we, do we delete the bed? Uh, I mean, we can't put it back. Modern hospital is blocked by another... Is it because they've put that wheelchair there? I think it's because of where they put that wheelchair. I think if we move there and put it back, is the bed fine? I think, yeah, I don't think the bed was broken. I think the wheelchair was blocking access to that side of the bed. I mean, that's not really our fault, is it? That's not our problem. Also, that wheelchair is the wrong colour. It must have come from somewhere else. Um, okay. So now the bed is there, and she's fine in, in a different bed. Okay, that was a bit weird game. Oh, well, this is just wonderful, isn't it? So it's about half six in the morning of day 86. So we've gone through pretty much the entire night shift. I mean, a few bits and bobs popped up, but we dealt with those. We got rid of the epidemic outbreak thing. That's gone away. So everybody is now back to working at peak efficiency, which is very good. And it wasn't going to be too long until we were going to trigger the accident event thing. But now this has popped up. Breaking news. Climate changes have caused exotic diseases to spread more and more often to local areas, especially Especially during this time of year. So we have yet another epidemic outbreak. The only good thing about this really is that that ward over there in infectious diseases is looking relatively empty. That one over there, the new little kind of, you know, the backup ward that we put in is full, I think. I think it's full. Um, yeah, that is full of people. But now that one over there is looking quite empty. Plenty of room over there. Um, okay, this isn't what we were planning. I wasn't thinking of doing an epidemic event. I wanted to do an accident event, but there we go. Yep, the game's thrown this at us. Let's accept and take over all the patients. All right, how many do we have? Five. Okay. Are they going to be particularly taxing? That's quite nice. I'm quite happy with that. Hang on, hang on. There's, there's got to be a catch here, game. <laughs> Normally, at one point we had 15 people, and now we've got five. I am dubious, game. I am dubious. I mean, yeah, the only bad thing is that, yeah, it's still the night shift at the minute. So people might have to wait a while. Right, Jennifer Moore, you've got tick-borne encephalitis, 
three hidden symptoms, um, you can come over immediately to infectious diseases. Hello, welcome to infectious diseases. We're going to give you all of these lovely things here. Uh, regular hospitalization, interview, physical exam, and that'll do for now. That'll uh, temp you know, take a temperature measurement. That's always a good thing. That'll you know, kick things off for you. Let's hope the others are equally as straightforward. Okay, right, so the night shift have gone. The money is down to 160 grand. That's still very good. Um, okay, Barbara Lee is one of these people. So we're not quite sure what's wrong with you. Nothing wibbly. So no wibbly hidden symptoms. That's internal medicine. That's infectious disease. That's an emergency one. Okay, so we're not quite sure yet. So physical exam, that would be quite good. Um, and I mean, you could do a nasal cavity inspection. That might work out if it's hay fever. Um, yeah, do that, look. Do that. Because yeah, that's a quick thing to do, imagine. And then do differential diagnosis. And then give you all those things to alleviate your current symptoms. Right. Judy Adams. You've got fatigue. So have a rest. Yeah, have a little sit down. We'll bring you a cup of tea and a nice biscuit. It'll be fine. Um, you've got one of many things wrong with you. We've got no idea what's wrong with you at all. Okay, physical exam. That's a good start. Um, and then, hang on a minute, where's all the other stuff? Do a temperature measurement, because that does make sense to do that. Um, and then, where is everybody's favourite thing? Do an evaluation, and then, can we please... Oh, we can't do differential diagnosis. Dr Dusty River can't do that. Um, Nova, can you do that? No. Um, Dr, Dr Hoosier can do it. Dr Hoosier, here we go. It's your time to shine, Dr Hoosier. <laughs> there we go. Right, so that's three kind of dealt, we're well not dealt with, but three seen by us. So I think, yeah, I've got a couple more. Just see what's going on. You've been treated already. They've been treated. Barbara Lee has got toxoplasmosis. Okay, we've sorted out what that is already. That's wonderful. Two hidden symptoms. Um, do you know what? Do all those things. Do everything. Do all the stuff. We'll try and find out what's wrong with you. Okay, Elizabeth Anderson. You've been uh, triaged in reception and you've had an interview. You've got cat scratch disease. Okay. Right. Ah, you do have a hidden symptom. So we'll try and sort all those things out for you. Um, should you be, yeah, you should be in infectious diseases. So pop up to there. Physical exam. Um, what's going to help with that exactly? What's going to help with that? So physical exam, abdominal palpation. Right, here we go. I'm saying the right word because last time I said, ah, there's two different words for this. There's palpation and palpitation. But no, one is palpation and one is palpitation. They're two completely different words. So last time I corrected myself incorrectly. Go me, go Dr. Penge. So um, yes, abdominal palpation. Look, I'm reading the word properly. So that means you kind of, you, you sort of, I don't know, sort of massage it, I suppose, to palpate something. You kind of sort of, you sort of feel around it a bit, don't you? And palpitations are like, you have heart palpitations when your heart beats irregularly or something. But whatever the case, this is different to that. So do an abdominal palpation and do a neck palpation because you have got swollen lymph nodes. We might find something else as well. And do differential diagnosis because that's everybody's friend. Right, okay. So get time ticking on. It's just gone to eight o'clock, so the money's going to pour in from the overnight people. Peter Williams. Oh, okay. Right. Peter Williams could potentially have the bubonic plague. It'd be quite nice if we could uh, sort of, uh, yeah, make sure you were not out and about. Can we isolate you? Can we chuck you into an isolation thing immediately? Even if you haven't got bubonic plague, it's better to, you know, on the side of caution, I would say. So physical examination, chest thing, neck palpation, temperature measurement, differential diagnosis, go down that route. Okay, so let's see how we get on with these other people. Barbara, little, hang on. Oh, you should be an infectious disease. Hang on a minute. Uh, yeah, infectious diseases, please. Pop over to there. Um, yeah, anti-malarial medication. You have some of that, please. Um, and Judy Adams. Still not sure what's wrong with you, Judy. Still not quite sure. Um, I mean, <laughs> we've whittled it down a tiny bit, but there's still, <laughs> there's still so many things. Speech listening could be for confusion. Neck palpation, abdominal palpation chest, exultation, do all those things. We've got eight minutes left. I think the others are going to be fine. I think these other ones are going to be absolutely fine. It might be Judy Adams that's potentially the problem. Oh, crack, they've done all that already. And we're still no closer to figuring anything out. Okay, good. <laughs> um, CRP. Um, 
okay, do that. Does that help? Does that whittle it down at all? We're on eight pages of diagnosis. Nope, not a thing. Skin allergy test? Um, hang on. There must be something we can do. There must be something. If we press that, like, it just brings back 12 bajillion things for us to try. Physical exam, interview, <laughs> abdominal palpation. I mean, I, I don't know what to do with all this. Um, blood draw. That's always a good thing to do, isn't it? Draw some blood. That might help. Um, and... I don't know which one of these is going to help out. Thorax percussion. Let's do that. And an ear examination. That might help out. A nasal cavity examination. Do all those basic things. See if we can figure out what it might be or what it might not be. Just to try to whittle down the things that it's not to give us a clearer thing about how we proceed. Okay, so you've had a temperature measurement. You should be okay. Tick-borne encephalitis. You're being treated in the right place. So, you know, three hidden symptoms. Do you know what? Do them all. Do everything. All the symptoms. Let's just try and find everything. Elizabeth Anderson, cat scratch disease. You've got a flashy, wibbly hidden symptom. Not happy about that. ECG, PCR sampling, serotologic sampling. Let's hope we can figure out what that is. Because we don't want people to be a bit dead. That would ruin all of this stuff. That would ruin our run here as well. Oh, we're going to complete that. We're going to complete that goal if we complete this event. Um, Barbara Lee... You need to be... Oh, okay, hang on. Yep, you can go into regular hospitalisation and you can have some antipyretic stuff. Um, is that for your fever? Okay, um, Mary Martinez. Mary Martinez is not one of our people. She has got tuberculosis. Give her all the things, please. Give her all of those things. And, I know, do all the stuff. There we go. <laughs> just make sure she's okay. Do all of the things. Dr. Pend is now becoming very lazy. So, yeah, just do all the stuff. Do all of the medical things to make the person not a bit dead. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we're not really getting through these, are we? Differential diagnosis. We've not figured out what's wrong with you yet. Um, blood sample for serologic testing. Microbial sampling. So you've got rat, hang on. So what's going to help here then? So that's going to be found. Physical exam we've done. Uh, physical exam, serotologic testing, and an ECG. Serotologic testing might help us figure out what it is. An ECG might figure out your symptom, possibly. So that might keep you alive. I'm a bit concerned about the time. I thought we had plenty of time to deal with five people. And, oh no, we're dealt with two now. We're dealt with two. Barbara Lee has been dealt with. Okay, this is good. Barbara... It's all fine. You you can go back to go back to computer control because we don't need to worry about you so much. And Jennifer Moore, wherever you are, you can also go back to computer control. I think you're okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So these three here, we've got four minutes to treat them. Oh, this is going to go wrong, isn't it? Judy Adams is just waiting for so as a blood test. Oh, it's a disaster. Okay, regular heartbeat. So the ECG thing was worth doing. You'll have to do CBC sampling. Have both of those things to do with your regular heartbeat. Um, not enough stretchers for infectious diseases. Okay. <laughs> we'll sort that out another time. Uh, it, it, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. There's loads of them. Michael Lewis. You're not an event person. They'll sort you out. They'll they'll look after you. It's okay. Um, three. We're going to fail this, aren't we? We're going to fail this. Oh, and now there's another epidemic outbreak because Mary Gonzalez here who's got the septicemic plague. Okay, different to the bubonic plague. It's nice, a bit of variety. Um, yeah, she wasn't uh, she wasn't uh, dealt with properly, and now it's kind of had another epidemic outbreak. Wonderful. Septicemic plague is one of the three types of plague caused by Bacterium yersinia pestis. Septicemic plague is spread by infected fleas living on small animals. It's the rarest of all three forms, typically infecting the blood. Well, isn't that wonderful? Yay. Um, give her all those things, please. <laughs> Botherations. Okay, so now it's going to be even harder to treat these. So we're going to lose that. I think we're going to lose the two in a row thing, which is a bit frustrating because we didn't want to do this at all. And when we only had the five people, I thought it looked so simple. But um, no, just these are really slow. These are really slow. Can we please sort this out? I mean, look, we've got no idea what's wrong with you. We're going to have to do a... I mean, if we get this right, that's going to be the, the, the finest guess of all the guesses, <laughs> if we get that right. We're going to do a guess at some point. But, um, I mean, yeah, have you been dealt with? You've got cat scratch disease, but you still have a hidden symptom. 
and it must be to do with heart monitoring and we can't deal with that um okay regular hospitalize you maybe that'll be okay but yeah you've got a flashy hidden symptom heart monitoring why can't we do that can't be can't be prescribed at this department um okay hang on what department is she in she's in infectious diseases do we not have one of those and then peter williams we're not quite sure what's wrong with him either we're gonna go for lyme disease we're gonna guess at lyme disease <laughs> because that's what we're gonna do heart monitoring in infectious diseases have we not got no it's there it's an empty room oh that's not very good okay hang on hang on let's get a cardiography unit thrown together we've got two hundred thirty-six thousand dollars. let's get one of these put together nice and quick there we go a cardiography unit is now set up over here in infectious diseases we've got the plant in and we've moved the door a bit so we can fit the bins behind the door and all that kind of stuff i think it's got everything it needs i even threw in a few posters look one general info poster and one about the heart because that seemed appropriate in a cardiography room oh hang on We've got a little gap on the table there. Um, how about, what could we put there? Let's get, you know, a first aid catch would probably be quite nice anyway to have around the place. Uh, let's pop that there. We've got a bookshelf, by the way. Just a lovely bookshelf. What could we put on there? A flower. Let's have a flower. Let's have a little flower on there. There we go. Wonderful. Right, so that is now in place. So we should be able to go to some of these people. Um, heart monitoring. Hang on. Maybe we need to move time on a second to make heart monitoring available. Why can't, why can't we do that? I thought that would be what we need. Long-term monitoring of the heart's electrical activity. Required, required room, ICU trauma center, observation room. Oh, it needs a wall monitor or an anesthetic machine. Oh, so we didn't need any of that stuff at all. Okay, I mean, it's there anyway. It's there in case anybody needs it in the future. Ah, oh, botherations. Okay, I think we have to we have to admit defeat here. I don't think this is going to work. It's not going to work. We've got two people um, two people in bed and one person, Judy. We've got no idea what's wrong with Judy at all. <laughs> not the faintest idea. She's waiting for a blood test, which even though we've got many blood labs and many clever blood technologist people, is going to take ages. And we didn't have that much time. So, I mean, yeah, it was a bit misleading. It gave us five people. And we thought, oh, this is going to be straightforward. And it's not. We don't even know what's wrong with Judy. And we've got 54 seconds left. These aren't treated. You've got a hidden symptom that's wibbly. You. We've guessed at your conditions. We've guessed that you've got Lyme disease. <laughs> we had no idea. Um, okay. Judy. What are we going to pick with you? Um, okay. You've got toxoplasmosis. You've got cat scratch disease. You've got tick-borne encephalitis. You've got Lyme disease. Let's pick something along those lines, shall we? Let's pick a thing. How about, um, I mean, can we do some of the tests really quickly? Can Dr. Hoosier do some very quick tests? Could we do, um, what could we do to really help out? These are all going to take too long. These are all going to take way too long. Ah, oh, botherations. Okay, how about we do um a blood pressure measurement that's not gonna help at all okay we need to pick one of these <laughs> this is this is this is the the most hail mary of all hail marys this is which one of these is it going to be we've got eight pages of possible diagnoses each has got six on six times eight is hang on six times six is mass with penge six times six is 36 plus another 12 48 possibilities and we've got no clue as to what it is. Um, let's go for something different to what these have all got. I mean, I'm thinking, maybe, if we go all the way back to the start, maybe it's that. Maybe it's that one there. American Trypanosomius. Let's give you that show. We'll not give you that. Let's diagnose you with that accurately. You can have some anti-parasitic drugs. <laughs> there you go. I'm sure that will help a great deal. I mean, if that works... If it is that, I'm, I will, I don't have a hat myself right now, but I will go and acquire a hat and then I will eat that hat. Um, but yeah, these are the two aren't going to be complete either. Oh, that's a bit of a bother. And we have an epidemic outbreak going on. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Come on, move time on nice and quick. Let's just see how this is going to end. Yeah, only 40%, not even over halfway. 
Uh, yeah, that's that's doomed to failure. Botherations. Okay, never mind, never mind. You can't win them all. Um, a prestige drop for this day even further. Good job we kept quite a chunk of that money. Um, yeah, we didn't diagnose the people. It was a complete disaster. And we got given a five grand penalty as well. Botherations. Okay, never mind, never mind. You can't, you can't win them all. You're having a collapse, that's fine. I'm now determined to figure out what's wrong with these people. I'm determined to figure out what... Oh, now Elizabeth Anderson gets treated. Oh, now it's up to three out of five. Judy Adams. Um, okay. She's waiting for a treatment. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know if she's got that, though. I think we I think we undiagnosed that. We can't, we can't go with that. One hidden symptom and fatigue. Um, I, I mean, what? I I've got no idea. We'll just do those things there. We're going to figure out what's wrong with her. We're going to figure it out. And we're going to sort you out as well, Peter Williams. Uh, yeah, it's fine. We'll do, that's okay. Right, we're just going to tick time on until these two people are sorted. Judy, again, no idea what's wrong with you. How are we supposed to figure this out? <laughs> Eight pages of possible things. Um, microbial sampling. That might help. That might possibly be a useful thing. Okay, we've figured out what all of Elizabeth Anderson's symptoms are. So we can return you back to computer control. That's okay. So you're out of our hair. Peter Williams, um, you possibly might have Lyme disease. You might not have Lyme disease. We're not entirely sure. We can't work it out. Um, okay, but we've got a couple of tests waiting. So, okay. Right, let's get those tests completed for you, and that might give you a proper diagnosis rather than our just total guess diagnosis. Um, okay, and then you over here, still no idea what you've got. Maybe that microbial thing will help a little bit. The only good thing is, is that you've only got one hidden symptom, and it's not a wibbly one. So you're not going to die or anything from this. It's just you're going to take a little while to figure out exactly what's wrong with you because we have absolutely no idea. Okay, we've figured out what's wrong with Peter Williams. It was rat bite fever, so we were wrong on our complete guess. So he's got rat bite fever, streptobacillus detected. Okay, so have some antibiotics, my good sir. And I think that should be okay for you. We've got all your symptoms sorted. You're not at risk of any kind of collapse or anything. You've got rat bio fever. So let's return you back to computer control, which just leaves us with the mystery of Judy Adams. Who knows what's wrong with Judy Adams? Um, we've sent her for some urine analysis and RT-PCR testing, which is that complicated thing with lots of big medical words in that I'm not even going to pretend to understand. But yeah, we're going to get you to do that because that might help. Or it might possibly not. I, I genuinely <laughs> don't know what to do. Um, and it, do, those, do those things. Yeah, all of that. All of that stuff there. Do all the doctory stuff, please. We're going to figure out what's wrong with Judy Adams. We have to. Brooke Harris has come up a few times uh, as a person who's collapsed, I think. Yeah, so maybe let's try and help you as well. Um, oh, okay, now you've got all the things underway at the moment. Okay, now that's fine. Brooke Harris is being managed by the staff. That's okay. Um, right, hang on. Judy, you've not done all those things for Judy. They're active. You haven't done all those, have you? They're not complete yet. No, you've not done those yet. Don't fib game. No, there's there's lots more things to uh, be tested upon Judy Adams before we manage to work out exactly what's wrong with her. And now Judy Adams is getting a bit bored. I mean, so are we, Judy Adams. We want to know what's wrong with you. You've only got one hidden symptom. I mean, I've got no idea what it could be. All these things are going on. So maybe one of these things here will reveal something. No, no, absolutely. That didn't help at all. <laughs> maybe we'll never find out. Maybe we'll never find out what's wrong with Judy Adams. She can remain a mystery to us. Because, yeah, only one symptom. Only one symptom. And it's not blinking on and off. So it's not a really terrible one. Another event. Good grief. We're still struggling with the aftermath of the last one. An outbreak of disease at a local petting zoo has caused the spread of various viral and bacterial diseases. Authorities recommend avoiding the area and are asking people who have visited the zoo to immediately report to local hospitals. Okay. Judy... Good luck with figuring out what's wrong with you. We're going to return you back to computer control. We're going to accept that. Take on all the patients. Oh, it's another one of these. Ten minutes and these are all going to be really difficult, aren't they? So what we're going to do is we're going to finish up for now. And then when we come back next time, we're going to handle this event if we can. It would be good if we could because that's going to push us closer to that goal just there. So we'll try and get that done if at all possible. And then I think what we'll do is, I think we need to do some building work. 
because the last sort of what three or four parts have been very sort of heavily focused on dealing with events we haven't really gone and built anything big for a while we've got a big chunk of money so i think next time we deal with the current event that's going on and then possibly we build ourselves either a cardiology department or a neurology department that will require going up to this floor here so we need to actually you know, go onto this floor and begin building on here, which would be quite exciting. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's what we do because we haven't done any kind of big building stuff for a while and I want to mix it up a bit. We don't want it just events every single time now. So yeah, we'll do some building next time just because I quite like that. And we get to put a whole new department with new things and new color schemes and new machines that go bing and bong and boop and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we'll do that next time and we'll deal with an event and we'll just see what happens. We shall see what nonsense arises when we pop back next time to Project Hospital. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvelous indeed. And also if you're not a Ready, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Oh no, not the piggy wigs. Want them to be healthy. Happy pigs, please. Raspberries, raspberries, raspberries everywhere. I went through and sold a load of turkeys as well, and they still come back. They're still coming back to haunt me. The storm moisture's going down. We need rain. We need rain. What's going on? <laughs>